when I get back to Moses, he's going to get a call from me. <laughs> he knows that. Um, but uh, it's so good to have sister, can I call you sister? Hilda with us. Yes, so good to have her here. Last week I was thinking she could be here, but she was still in quarantine. Still in quarantine. <laughs> ah, and I was like, oh yes, it's Tuesday. Uh, okay, but she's here. She's free like the eagle. She has flown up to the gazebo. <laughs> bless the Lord, bless the Lord. And, and we know your husband, um, you know, couldn't make it because, you know, what's going on. But hopefully next week, if you would like to come again we would love to have you both yes god's willing our lives being spared right that's right there you go that's right that's right sister veronica she has been coming faithfully from the very beginning i need to tell you that we always even in the uk go to separate churches yes always. really yeah so in different, 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 oh, Baptist, Catholic. Catholic. Oh, okay. So to All right, then. So. So he's not to think on my. Yes, I understand. <laughs> well, um, well, next week maybe you both come to the same church. <laughs> 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 See, he's not able to go to the Catholic, so maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. We're all saving the same, serve the same God, right? Yes, same, same, same God. Last time I checked. <laughs> so it, it all depends on where your heart is, right? Yes. Yeah. So um, this morning, I'm going to share something. The Lord's helping me, the Holy Spirit helping me to be able to do so. That um, came to my spirit. I was thinking about who we are really as Christians, that sometimes we don't know who we are. And then the scripture came to me in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 and Holy Spirit we're just asking you to just lead by your spirit lead and direct the words that would come from my mouth because they're not my words but Lord God they're your word it's coming from the Bible your word God that was inspired and Lord Jesus, just let it minister this day to those who are here and to those who are listening, those who are watching God, minister in a way that only you can. And we give you thanks and we praise it for this precious, sacred word of God that you've given unto us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Okay, so this came to my spirit, um, the scripture, because I was actually going to go down another path. But the scripture came to my spirit spirit and I was like okay so let me just see how this is gonna unfold Lord and it's taken from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 and um, we have it on here you know just a second we'll have it there but it says I want you to see it it says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, we have certainly been given the opportunity to get to know God through his word and his dealings with us and to become familiar with his character and his ways. We've been given that opportunity to get to know him personally. So what about us? Do we know who we are since we are finding out who God is? Who are we? More importantly, whose are we? Who do we belong to? Have you ever spoken to someone, and I'm sure that each of us can say, yeah, yeah, I think we have sometime in the past. Have you ever spoken to someone who appears to be looking for answers and states, I'm trying to find myself. And you might be kind of alarmed. Trying to find yourself. Isn't this who you are? You're trying to find yourself. Where are you looking? So that person may have embarked on some kind of research, some kind of study. They're on a journey that would eventually give them or him or her the answers to all that they're asking, right? All the questions. However, if you get a chance to talk with that person sometime later on, weeks, 
months, years, if you run into them. That person might tell you that his or her efforts were futile and somehow they didn't get the answers they were looking for. They still have not discovered who they are. They're still trying to find themselves. Well, I have some good news for you. The Bible, this precious word of God right here that we can never ever exhaust. This Bible has all the answers to that question. Who am I? Who are you? If you're searching, trying to figure out who you are, trying to find yourself, guess what? Look right here in this precious word of God. You know, we have, you could read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation in a year, because they have that, reading the Bible through a year. And that is, that is a, a task right there. And you could say to yourself, well, I have finished reading the Bible. I'm good to go. And then, guess what? Not a few weeks down the road, you take up a scripture that you have read, right? And you're like, wow. You read into a passage, a, a chapter, and you're like, I don't remember seeing that. <laughs> and you're like, oh, goodness. I didn't see it that way before. I'm getting some revelation here. You can never exhaust this word of God. No matter what is going on, no matter what time of life you're in, no matter what season you're in, you take this word of God up. And if you have a question and you're talking to the Lord, better believe he's gonna have an answer for you right here in this word of God. It is so exhausting. You and I could read a, a fine novel, right? Written by somebody very famous and it, it's just really thrilling and, and, and interesting and you enjoy reading that book. Do you take that book up a second time? <laughs> Not really, because you got the gist of it, you enjoyed it, you don't really want to go back and read the same thing again. This Word of God is not like that. You go back to it and you know what happened? You keep going back to it. And every single time, it's like a brand new book that you have picked up. It's just amazing to me. Isn't it amazing to you? We, nobody could ever say, I'm gonna have to close this because the wind is doing something here, but we have the, the words that we project in the scriptures, but never boring, always exciting, always exciting. I, I remember just shortly after I got saved, I would go home from school, I was in high school, and I would go home from school and I could hardly wait to get into my room and open up this precious word of God. I'm telling you. And I started in the Old Testament, Sister Veronica. I loved those Old Testament stories, the Jericho wall coming down, and Moses and, 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 and the Israelites and all these plagues and how, oh my gosh, all these miracles, I, I was just like, and then I had, and I had to remember I needed to do my homework, <laughs> you know, but I just enjoyed it. I, I was so excited about it. It was so strange. And the next day I would come home again, I'm like, back into that word. <laughs> and I'm reading it and reading it and reading it and just saying, oh my gosh, did I understand all of it at that time? No, but it, it just thrilled me. This was like a movie. I mean, really lovely, I'm, I'm telling you, but so we're going to examine Ephesians 2 and verse 10 because for those who don't know who they are and they're looking and as I say, you can know who you are from this word of God here. Let's look at Ephesians 2.10 again. We see the word workmanship. Workmanship. And, and you're saying, okay, workmanship. What does that really mean? Let's, let's look at it. It means the degree of skill with which a product is made or a job is done. That's it, the workmanship. Also means the quality imparted to a thing in the process of making it. That's the workmanship of something. So what came to mind just this morning actually was Toyota, and I know my husband will be like, whoa, Toyota. Our, our, our vehicle, the Hilux, was made by Toyota. Toyota, there's a certain workmanship that went into making the Hilux. 
And there are other vehicles that actually look like that. When, you, when you're on the road, you say, oh, that looks just like our vehicle, but it's not really a Hilux. <laughs> it might not be, it's not a Toyota either, but it's something else. But you know what? It's, it's, it's set apart. The Hilux is set apart because, okay, that was made by Toyota. And Toyota said, this is the, these are the specifications I'm gonna, we're going to use for making the Hilux. We'll make other cars, yes, and other vehicles, but for the Hilux, we're going to use this thing as against using that thing that we use for that other vehicle. Okay, another thing that came to mind was Calvin Klein. I don't think I've been closed by Calvin Klein. I'm not sure. Maybe I have to look at the labels. <laughs> you might have some in your closet. <laughs> but Calvin Klein, very exquisite clothing, right? Mm -hmm. So, we can look at this piece of garment and that piece of garment and we're like, mm, that's not Calvin Klein. <laughs> oh, this over there, oh yeah, that is Calvin Klein. There, we look at the workmanship of the garment, right? Um, then moving on to something else, I thought about Southwest Airlines. We travel with Southwest quite often. Um, there's a certain workmanship that went into making the Southwest airplanes, right? It's not going to be the same as American Airlines plane. So, you know, workmanship basically has to do with how this, the skill that went into making this particular thing, the skill, the, 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 the mind, the, the, the thoughts, and, and all of the intricacies involved in making and processing this thing the workmanship. So when I read this definition, it reminded me of instances that we have heard about where, and, and this is kind of sad to me, and I'm sure it would be sad to you too, where children from their early, um, in their early years, they are told by their parents or other relatives around, child, you're not going to amount to anything, you know. You're not going to amount to much at all, really. Look at you. I can, I cannot understand it. I still don't understand it. I don't know if I'll ever understand it. How a product from your body, right, your offspring, you can actually turn to that child and say, you're not going to amount to anything. Oh, I, that grieves my heart. Now, if you've lived with the mentality that you're not worth much due to what you've been told by a parent, a friend, a teacher, a spouse, an employer, a family member, a close friend, etc., 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 the list goes on. In other words, those whose opinions can have a great impact on us, if you've been told that, then once you understand that who you are, when you understand who you are, despite what they have told you, once you understand who you are in Christ Jesus, you know what happens? You're set free. In your mind and in your spirit, set free to walk into who God has called you to be and you won't be trying to find yourself. Because it's possible that if you grew up as a child having been told that you will not amount to much, you will be one of those persons trying to find who you are. Because that has not been validated by someone who would, would, would make that difference in your life. It has not been validated by your parent, by your teacher, by an employer, by a friend. And you're searching still because it hasn't been validated. Well, the Bible validates who you and I are in Christ Jesus. And the scripture says here in Romans, I'm sorry, Romans, I'm sorry, John chapter 8 and verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free Indeed, there, there no, I mean, <laughs> there's no doubt about you know, it. It's a free indeed. In other words, it's not just you're kind of free, somewhat free, free some, some, some of the times you're free, but some of the times you're not free. You're 75% free. What does that say right here? 
free what? Indeed. And the Son is Jesus Christ. And so when we can bring ourselves into submission to the word of God to understand that this word is telling me who I am, telling you who you are, that brings us into a place of freedom. Like the eagles were singing about this morning, we soar up with wings, eagles. So this is what the Bible says who we are. I was pulling out some of these scriptures that, that actually indicate, show us who we are in Christ Jesus. And if you are here and if you're watching and you really are still searching, I want you to really examine and, and think about this, not just with your mind, but with your spirit. Let the Holy Spirit just zoom in to your spirit this morning and just let you see, understand, realize, and come into agreement with what this word is saying about you. No longer listen to, you're not worth anything much, you know. You're not ever going to be able to accomplish this thing in life. You're just, you're just going to be a drifter. Put those thoughts and those words that you've heard, block them from your spirit. And let these words come in and penetrate the darkness and break the chains because we just read that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Indeed. So we have got to come to that place where we now humble ourselves, submit ourselves, and say, okay, we're gonna stop listening to these other things, and this is what we're gonna now listen to, the word of God. In John chapter one and verse 12, it says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Here it's the, the, those that received him are those who believed in him, believe that Jesus Christ came into this world. He came into this world to save us from our sins. He died on the cross, rose from the dead, and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you, 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 and myself. The power to become the sons of God is the ability to be Christians. That's the ability right there. We don't just say, okay, we're gonna be Christians. He draws us by his spirit and he pulls us into his embrace and he forgives us and we are saved by grace through faith that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. So here it is, even to them that believe on his name, so we're saying here, with that, from that scripture, we can make the statement, I am a child of God. So if my parent says, I disown you, and we've seen it, excuse me, in some, um, some of the, the movies we've watched, where in some of the different cultures, when the child decided that he or she wanted to veer from the, that way of belief that the family had actually held on to for so long. That child says, no, I've been exposed to Christianity. I want Christ. The parent or the parents will say, you're no longer my child. Just recently we saw something like that. And that's very painful. But that person made a decision and he did leave. He left, he, he had, to, the, the father didn't want him around in the house anymore, and he had to leave. But because he made a stand, he took a stand for Jesus Christ, and he said, this is it. Um, I love you, Dad, I love you, Mom. But this is what I want. And I could actually stay here and, and continue, but no, there's a greater call. There's just something else, I, I, I want Christ. And so the father said, well, you're no longer my son. But here it is, Jesus Christ says, we can be his children. God says, I'm a, he tells us that we are children of God. I'm a child. Make that statement, I am a child of God, whether I feel like it or not. And even though, like the prodigal son, I had gone and done my own stuff, and the father had all right, really, to say, ah, oh, you're no longer welcome here. That, that God doesn't do that to us. Despite our wretchedness 
and all of our wickedness, Jesus Christ came to this world to die for us and to save us from our sins. And now we're children of God. So I am a child of God. The next one is, I am a branch of the true vine. John 15, one, and then verse five. I am the true vine, that's what Jesus says about himself. And the father is the husband man. He's the one that, you know, does, he's a gardener, right? Um, in verse 5, it says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Talking to us, the branches. He that abideth in me, that means we're going to stay. We're not going to run in and out, in and out, in and out. When things are good, we will be out there. When things are not so good, we're going to run back to you. Because we need your help, Lord. Abide in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing, nada. So I am a branch of the vine. That gives me a sense of security, Sister Veronica, because you know why? It means that I'm attached to something. If my family, or friends, or just different ones, decide that you can't be in my group, Sorry, this group is just for, you know, certain people and you're not of that, of that caliber. Then, guess what? That means I'll be disconnected from them and there won't be that sense of belonging. So, when I stay attached to the vine, Jesus Christ, as a branch, because really if I become disconnected from him, you know what? I can't bring forth much fruit and I'm going to wither, right? And we can see it even from vegetation around us. You see the branches and the vine, they have to stay together. So the vine will not forsake us, the branch. As long as we want to be connected to the vine, he is going to make sure we are connected to him. And we receive the sustenance that he alone can give so that we can bring forth much fruit. And we can do, we can do all things. We can't do anything. We can't even live. We think we can open up our eyes. Nobody opened up their eyes this morning. You didn't just say, well, I opened up my eyes. No way. If our brains were not functioning, we could not open these eyes. We could not hear anything. We could not move one limb if these, this was not functioning. And if God himself did not ordain for us to be alive this morning. So without him, we can do nothing. So that gives me a sense of security. I'm attached to him. So I can, I can do some, I can, I can do all things. I can move, I can run, I can jump, I can, I can live abundantly, an abundant life because I'm connected to the vine. Amen? Amen. Next one is, and we sang that this morning, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of Jesus. That's who I am. If you're searching, and you're looking so hard, you're on a journey to find who you are, you're a friend of Jesus. John 15 and verse 15 tells us. Can you read that for us, please? Pastor? Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth, his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Mm. Now look at that. That sounds like a click. It just came to me. You know, um, certain things are not shared with everybody. We don't share certain things with every single person that we know. Only with our really good friends. Is that right? Am I right? Yeah, we're not going to tell all of our business to just the man in the street. <laughs> you know, sometimes I have people come up to me and they're, they're telling me things I don't, I don't know them. I might be sitting in a waiting room and they're strangers, <laughs> but they're starting to tell me all these things. And I'm thinking, Lord, they must know that I would not divulge anything. They must. Why are they telling me all this? And I don't believe it's because, because, you know, God has allowed it so that I can maybe minister to them, you know, help them somehow. But um, normally we don't just tell everything to everybody. 
and anybody, right? So Jesus right here is saying, I'm not calling you servants because you don't tell the servants everything. I'm calling you friends because you know what it is? Everything that I have heard from my father, whatever he says to me here, I'm not even going to keep it from you. Whatever he tells me here, I'm going to share it with you. You're my friends. Yeah. BFF. <laughs> you, you, yeah, best friends for her. You're my BFF. Ooh, that puts us in a certain category there, doesn't it? You know, um, a lot of times, if you notice, when Jesus was um, ministering to the crowds, a whole lot of people, wherever he was, mountainside, you know, at the seashore, wherever, wherever he was, and he was ministering to the crowds, he would, he would use parables. And so the disciples would say to him after us, okay, master, uh, tell us what that one was about. He said, okay. He didn't share it with the crowd. And he took them aside and he said, this is what it meant, right? He was talking to his friends, you and I, are his friends. Isn't that a privilege to be called a friend of God? Oh my goodness gracious. Don't take that lightly now, guys. Do not take it lightly. To be called a friend of God? Mm. That's awesome. So let's look at this other one. I just picked out some of them. Um, I am a fellow heir with Christ. Mm. They don't hear with Christ. We see that in Romans 8, 16 and 17. And you know, to be an heir is actually to receive something that you yourself didn't even work for. <laughs> Somebody, a relative of yours, um, had put up all this, and there's this will, and you might not have heard about it before, but at that person's death, what happens? Mm. All this information is coming out that such amount was given to this one and that one and the other one, and sometimes that causes a problem among <laughs> different relatives. But to be an heir, a fellow heir, now fellow heir, let's, let's look at that. Is that, is that woman's eight? 16, I think I, that, okay. All right, so let's look at 16, right. Let's look at 16, the spirit himself. I know it says itself here, but it really means himself addressing the Holy Spirit. Beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, which we said earlier, right? So if children, so think about it. If you have your children and, and you want them to, to benefit from what you have stored up for them. The children become the heirs, right? Heirs of God. So then this is now talking to us, God's children. If children then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Ah, what does that mean, joint heirs with Christ? Simply put, whatever Jesus is getting, I'm getting it too. <laughs> that says, well, I'm going to give Jesus 90% <laughs> and you're going to get 10%. He says, Jesus maybe is getting 50 and you're getting 50 of the whole. Or if he's giving Jesus 100, you're getting 100 too. Right? So joint ears with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So there's a, a, another, that's another little road there about suffering with Christ. Not on the cross, because he already died and that was fulfilled. But we suffer with him and, and the things that we go through. But then we will be glorified with him too, in the end. So we're joint ears, joint ears with Christ. So we have the right to say to our Heavenly Father. Okay, Papa, <laughs> Abba, uh, you said you were giving Jesus this. I want that too. 
And should, you think the father would say, uh, 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 uh. Nope, sorry, that's my beloved son who gave his life on the cross for you. You did not go on that cross. And you want the same thing? Papa, you said it right here. <laughs> you said it, so here I am. <laughs> I want it, Lord, because you said it. I want it with what kind of spirit? I want it humbly, yes. I am actually coming to you. Tears are coming down my face because I think, how on earth could I even be a joint ear with your son? How is it that you could even give me the same thing that you're giving him when I didn't even walk in his shoes? I did not walk down the Via Dolorosa. I did not walk down the sorrowful way. I was not in the garden saying to you, if, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. I was not there doing that like your son, and yet you, you're giving me what he is getting from you. How is that? So when I go to him and I'm saying, Papa, I want what Jesus is getting. I'm not doing it with a proud heart and, and, and with defiance or anything like that. I'm not demanding it from him. I'm saying, you said, you said, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. So I'm humbly asking you, God. And I'm claiming it at the same time for the same thing that you're giving your son Jesus because you said in your word that I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Mm, man, wow, didn't even plan on saying all of that. But thank God for the Holy Spirit. Did we read verse 17? I think that's 17, okay. So, just a few more. I have been accepted by Christ. Sometimes we're in certain gatherings or groups and we don't feel accepted. We don't feel that maybe we're on the same level with them or you know, just whatever it is, or maybe we're going through something ourselves and we can't identify with them and we just feel like we're just out of sorts, like a fish out of water, so to speak. And we're not, we don't feel accepted. In Romans 15 and verse seven, it says, Wherefore, receive ye one another. You know, just you receive someone in your home. You say, welcome. You, you offer them something to drink or eat or whatever it is, and, and you, you greet them warmly. It says, receive one of you one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. There's a reception that Jesus has for us. He has to receive us. When he receives us, and, and this is how he receives us, when we come to him and we say, I know I've sinned, Lord, but I understand that you died for my sins on Calvary. I thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. As, I ask you to wash me in that blood and receive me as your own. And then what does he say? Does he say, oops, nope, sorry, not you. You're just too bad. <laughs> no, 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 you, mm -mm, you're another. Mm. He doesn't do that. Even with the vilest of sinners, because of his word and the mission that he had, and the accomplishment on, on the cross, he accepts us. That's all, he, that's all he needs, just for us to actually agree with the word that we have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that we're sinners, and we're saying, can you please receive me based on your blood and what you did on that? And he says, come, I accept you. Because of, because of our goodness? No. Because of our looks? No. None of those things. All of our righteousness is as filthy rags before him. That's what the Bible tells us. All of our righteousness, all the right things that we think we could ever do and try to accomplish between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., which never happens because sometimes we will mess up. But that's not how he accepts us. Not based on our good works but based upon the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary, he accepts us. He calls us his own. Another thing, if you're looking for yourself and you're trying to figure out who you are, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that you are a new creature in Christ when you come to him. I'm a new creature in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And you say, hold on, Lord, I used to do drugs and um, I think I might have murdered some people. Are you serious? When I come to you, when I come to you, when I accept you as my Lord and Savior, are you saying really and truly that all those things are passed away? Yeah, there might be some records on, on me, yes, at the courthouse or, you know, the prison, wherever. There might be some records there. But in God's book, all that's wiped away. Wow, what a wonderful judge that is. All that is wiped away through the blood of Jesus Christ. So we stand before him and we're thinking, we're trembling in our boots because we're thinking, oh Lord, he has a magnifying glass and he's seen everything that I've done and he knows even my secret thoughts, he knows everything and uh, surely, 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 how on earth can that be passed away? He says he would remove our sins from us, I believe, and he would cast them into what? Far from, far from, from the east and the west. He, 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 he cast them in to the point where we can't, we are the ones who would have to go fishing <laughs> to go find those sins. He chooses not to. He cast them so far away. They're out of his mind because he chooses to see that as past. That, that's the past, and he leaves it back there. All things are become new. So we see ourselves now, and we're like, oh my God, I can't believe this is me. Boy, he dusted me off, he, cleaned, he washed me, he cleaned me up. The prodigal son, was, he, he, the, the father offered him a new garment because he was, his garment was tattered and torn. He had been out there. And so, when we come to Jesus Christ, we tend to want to look back at our past and think, oh my God, is this me now? Wow, wow, Woo. I don't look too bad now, do I? <laughs> and that's only because of what Jesus' blood has done. Not because of anything that I have done. Sometimes people try to clean themselves up. They say, um, I want to come to church. I know you've invited me and, and, and I would love to come, but I tell you what, I need to stop doing this first. When I stop doing this thing and I stop doing that other thing and I get things straight, then, then I'll come to church. Because they feel that they have to clean themselves up first before coming before a holy and righteous God. Well, guess what? If they think that they can clean themselves up, then what is the use of the blood of Jesus? And even when they think that they're cleaning themselves up, remember, as said before, the Bible says that all of our righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. So even though they try to clean themselves up, God is going to say, oh, sorry, not according to my standards. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't check that piece there off. No, nope, can't check this off, can't check that off. Not going to work. We have to come to him through the blood of Jesus. And then we become new and new creature. New creature through Jesus Christ. Not one that we created. If you're looking for yourself this morning, it's not one that you're going to create to say, ah, this is the new me. I've got a makeover. This is a new me. We can only have a makeover when the blood of Jesus is applied to us, to our lives. That's the makeover right there. Then we become new creatures. So, another one is, I have become the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, that same chapter. The righteousness of God in Christ. That's sometimes hard when we think about who we are. We're prone to sin. We have these flaws, these weaknesses. He hath made him to be sin for us. God had made Jesus. Jesus became sin for us. Who knew no sin? He didn't even know sin. He was he came in bodily form, but he was very man, 
yet very God, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Who is the one that is making us righteous? It's Jesus himself. When we take him into our lives, he makes us righteous. So if you're saying, because you've been told, ah, you're just a bad boy, and you'll always be a bad boy. You're a bad girl. You'll always be a bad girl. Mm. Guess what? Banish that thought from your mind this morning, because here it says that you have become it. When you come to Jesus, you become the righteousness of God in Christ. You're now righteous. That's it. Next one, I am chosen, holy, blameless before God in Ephesians 1 and verse 4. According as he had chosen us in him, God has chosen us in Christ, before the foundation of the world, before, think about that, before, the, before he even laid the foundation of this world, Genesis, before he did any of that, that we should be holy. That was what he purposed, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, how can it be? Some people are like, I don't know. I don't think you can call us holy. Mm. We're standing before a holy God. Mm. But he chose us before the foundation. We're his workmanship. He's the one that is actually defining us. Just like how Toyota decided where we're gonna use these specifications for making the highlights. And we're gonna put this part over here and that part and make it different from this. Each of us, each of us was made specifically according to God's purpose and we are his workmanship and we are chosen. We're holy and blameless. Is it because of what we have done? No, but because of who he is. And the fact that we have yielded ourselves to him so that he can work this holiness in us and allow us by his grace to be blameless before God. Last one. I have been made, and I love this one, I have been made complete in Christ. Think about that. Think about complete. Nothing lacking, nothing broken, mm, nothing missing. Oh, think about it. Think about a body that has a possibly one arm or a missing leg or one eye because of some accident or something, unfortunately. That body is not complete, right? And sometimes, some of us, because of the situations we have gone through, the experiences we've had to endure in life, we've been broken. We've become disconnected. Not in our bodies necessarily, but in our spirits and who we, we, we think we are, because we're still looking for ourselves. And then we, we hear about the gospel, and we hear about Jesus' love, and we read this scripture, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in Jesus Christ. I mean, to me, that is a success story. This is where you say, and they lived happily ever after, <laughs> because, if we feel in searching for ourselves and we haven't found ourselves yet that there's still something missing, something broken, a disconnect, we can come to Christ Jesus and everything, everything, Sister Hilda, everything comes together like this in Christ Jesus. When they're putting the parts together for the highlights or for whichever vehicle, they, they have to do um, a test run 
Is that what it is? They have to test it out, right? To make sure, you know what, this thing that I put here and that other thing, and I put six of this, we put six instead of three, and we put whatever it is, and this thing over there. They can't just say, well, okay, we put them, we, we put all this together from our knowledge and our skill. So there it is, there's a the halux. What they have, they have to do a what? Test run. See, so, you know, can all these parts come together and work in unison? Was it complete? Was the work complete? Did, did, did we really do a, a, a good job? Will it pass inspection? Will it? With Jesus Christ, we who have been created, and we who are his workmanship, we pass the test because we were put together skillfully by him. And he is able to keep us from falling. He really is. We stay connected to him, and that way, this creature, we, his workmanship, can bring forth glory and honor to him. We know who we are in Christ Jesus because we are his workmanship, we belong to him. And we're complete. And there is no reason to look any further. We know who we are in Christ Jesus. His workmanship. Created unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's how God wants us to walk. When we know who we are, then we know how we can walk. We know where we're going. If you don't know who you are, you know you might need somebody to tell you who you are. You're going around. Everybody knows who I am. So, oh, you know who you are? You are the workman, God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So you don't have to keep doing what you're doing before, which God hath ordained that you should go ahead and just walk in them. That's who you are. That's it. Praise the Lord. So I pray this message has had an impact on you. It has blessed you tremendously. I know it has blessed me. I did not know I was going to go down this path, but I pray blessings upon you today. And if anybody is watching and, and you really don't know who you are, I pray today that this has helped you and, and you will just, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will give your heart to him today. Because let me tell you, you will never, ever regret doing so. God bless you. I'm gonna stand in the view of the camera this time. I've realized that watching the watching the video, I'm standing up front and you almost see my neck down because <laughs> I'm too close. <laughs> it's always good to review, right? Review what you've done to see you can improve on it. So that was a wonderful word, uh, Pastor Sandra. And uh, it's always good to hear the good word of the God of the Lord because He brings us new things every every day, right? Like, like she said, the, the word of God is new to us every time we open it. We might read that same scripture over and over again. It's different, but it's every day, every, it's a new day every day, right? And new circumstances, new situations, that same word is gonna, gonna be a different meaning to us. We're gonna see it in a different way. That's right. And then and, and it's so good to, to, to listen to the word of God every day. And 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 the the, the scripture or the, the um, title, Who Are We in Christian that we should get to that uh, Pastor has shared us with us, shared with us is that to know that just being a child of God makes us wonderful, makes us beautiful people, because we've fallen after God, our Savior, making us complete. Some of the, some of the this, uh, uh, words that was used in the scriptures that was is that that we are complete in Christ. We are complete. We are not halfway or part of a way, we are complete, a whole person. We're heirs of, of, of our father, God. Who, who wouldn't want to be an heir of, you know, you think about the world, the um, kings or Bill Gates, you know, he's a billionaire, right? He has all this stuff, you can do anything he wants, right? 
Imagine being his heir. But 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 he can, all he has is is you know money. You know money can only do so much. But heir of God that has all the power and the might That's to right. do and, and and allow us to get and he can give us all the money in the world. But not only that, he gives us hope and he gives us strength and joy to continue in this world with all that's going on. We are his chosen people. You know, chosen people. Of all the people in this world, we are chosen by God. We're holy. We're holy and blameless. And I go on and on and on, but just being that that person, that child after God, God's own heart, that child that 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 God loves so much, yes. so yes. much that He gave His only begotten Son. That child, that person, that 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 woman, that man, that 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 young person that is so important to our Father. Would you? Don't you? Don't you? If you don't know Him, would want to be that person that that God holds under his arms, hold his hands, and want to keep and protect on an ongoing basis. Want the best for us. Isn't that what we all want to do? All we want, don't you, don't you want that for your own child? Yes. You know, when you have a child come into this world, you do anything for that child. You want the best for them. You want them to have a better life than you had. Yes. Even though your life might be great, you want even the, a better life yes. for them. God wants the same thing for us. Each and every one of us. So, I thank you for that word. Beautiful word of encouragement for your people. So, Lord God, we just thank you for bringing us, Lord God, that understanding, that reassurance, Lord God. We just ask you, Lord God, to keep us this week, Lord God, as we continue this week, Lord God, tomorrow and the days to come, Father God, in your protection, in your guidance, Lord God. We also lift up everyone, Lord God, that is suffering today, that is in that, that, that their heart is aching, Lord God, for they have missed their loved one or they've lost their loved one in or during this pandemic, yes. Lord God, yes. through the hurricanes and the and the different um, issues, Lord God, that's happening yes. in this world, Lord God. We just lift them up, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to Lord God, to just show them with your love and your grace, Lord God, so they can continue the day, Lord God. Give them the hope that is in you, only in you, Lord God. So we thank you, God. We praise you. We magnify your holy, precious name for this another day, Lord God. To keep us in your loving care, Lord God. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.